Hello and welcome to our final chapter of the Cisco Academy Module 14 Network Automation. All right, so uh, please don't forget to take your notes and submit them when we're done. And this chapter has a lot of good videos to watch. Almost in every section is a video explaining how things are. It's mainly just information, um, information only. There's really not a lot of even packet tracer um, labs to do. But anyway, so please take as much information as you can. And knowledge-wise, it is important to know um, net, what network automation is and how it works. All right, so uh, let's just briefly go over what we need to know. We'll discuss cloud computing, virtualization, and we'll talk also about the SDN again and their controls. All right, so um, please write these bullet points down. There, you know, these are some of the benefits of automations. You have machines that can work 24 hours a day without any breaks. You have machines that provide more uniform products. Automations will allow the collection of vast amount of data that can be quickly analyzed. Um, you got robots, you know, robots that are used in dangerous conditions such as mining, firefighting, and so on. Under certain circumstances, you've got some smart devices that can alter their behavior to reduce energy usage and make medical diagnos uh, diagnosis and improve uh, automobile driving. So we're talking about what? Artificial intelligence. So programming. This is not a programming course, but that's what really, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about automation. Network automations is when you have a whole network that uh, software-wise talk to each other and um, learn from each other from the environment itself. But you have a programming, you know, a software engineer that needs to do all that programming. And, um, and these are the benefits of everything that you get when it comes from programming. All right, thinking devices, we're talking about smart devices. So many of these devices incorporate smart technology. So uh, this can be as simple as smart, smart appliance, lowering the power consumption, right? Uh, it makes it as if you were thinking devices, right? Because it analyzes all the data. Now, uh, data formats. So data formats are simply a way to store and exchange data in a structured format. So please write that down. So you'll know exactly when we're talking about HTML, for example, JSON, XML, or YAML, what these are. So please write also the different types of formats that are out there. Um, HTML, JSON, XML, and YAML. So write these down and what they stand for. And also the last bullet point, the data format that is selected will depend on the format that is used by the application tools or script. So some artificial intelligence or automation devices will use JSON or or some will use XML. Uh, typically, this is for web pages or YAML. It all depends on the application tool or script. And many systems will be able to support more than one data format at the same time. So it doesn't have to be just one programming language, for example. Right? And here is a typical data format. Uh, just like you're writing, if you took any programming languages like um, Java or Python or anything like that, but this is the JSON format. You know, you begin and end with brackets. Uh, then you got the YAML format and the XML format, which is very close to um, the HTML tags. It is an HTML tags, but it's a programming language that enables them to communicate with each other. All right, the JSON. Uh, so please write the first sentence in case you were asked. Is a human readable data format used by applications for storing, transferring, and reading data? All right. Uh, this is a, so um, this is because it's easy to parse and it can be used with most modern programming languages. Python uses JSON. So 
please write that down. Um, so, for example, just remember this. When you type this in, this is the actual program that does it for you, right? This is, for example, compare the iOS format. Notice that each object is by brackets and braces. It's enclosed. Okay. Then <clears throat> that's the. Uh, we don't have to get into that unless you are going to be a programmer yourself. These are just <coughs> good to know. I don't think it's really need to know. I might be wrong. But anyway, uh, let's move on. This is move on to the YAML. So please write this down. The YAML is another type of human readable format used by applications for storing, transferring, or reading data. All right, so please write that down and the three bullet points be beneath it. It is like JSON and it is considered to be a superset of JSON. It has a minimalist format, making it easier to both read and write. And it uses indi indications to define its structure without the using of brackets and comma, which sometimes can be confusing um, to programmers. So here's a typical YAML, and here is, here's a here's a JSON, and here is how YAML. It's much easier. So you got, for example, the IETF interface. Remember that command? All right. So here's the description. You would do indentation to give you the description, the name, the descriptions. The enabled is true. This is the program to execute that command for you. So it's much easier to read and follow then to use brackets and you know this is one you know when you open bracket close brackets this is the execution of the ip uh, ip address command again another opening close brackets and so on so uh instead of doing that it's much easier to do it this way it's easier to see and follow maybe i'm wrong but that's what it is all right the third type is the xml so please write that down with its bullet points the XML is one of more type of human readable data that's also used to store, transfer, and read data by applications, right? It's like HTML, which is standardized markup language for creating web pages. It's self-descriptive. Um, it uses tags just like HTML, all right? So here's a typical XML data format. And uh, easily, it can easily be learned, by the way. Uh, we're not going to get into this. HTML and XML uh, is just a matter of tags. So when, uh, when this is sent to a web page, the web page reads the tags and will know how to display the content by the beginning and ending of that. For example, name, when you have front slash name, whatever is in between is going to be the title. So you see, and so on. You can learn this within in less than a day. The pro, no, uh, HTML and XML formats are very easy to follow. All right, so let's talk about now APIs. And uh, when it comes to APIs, okay, so here's what I need you to write when it comes to API. API is a software, that first sentence, the first bullet point. It is... A software that allows other applications to access its data and its or services. It is a set of rules describing how one application can interact with another applications and the instructions to allow the interactions to occur. All right, that's what the API is. Um, so, therefore, you know, this is. For example, if you want to write an application, you know, you want to write an app for Android. So Google, which owns Android, will give you an API, an application programmable interface, and you will use that to access there so it can work for, for their operating system. So you do your uh, programming and you'll use your API you use the API that you were given from Cisco to enable it to work with Android. The same thing if you wanted to work for Windows, you get the API from Microsoft. If you wanted to work for uh, you wanted to work for a Win 
Is it an, an Apple? You need the iOS APIs and so on. So he's the middle guy. So you give the information to the API, the API will be able to just use the data for you and with the operating system itself, okay? Uh, so for example, you can, again, the, here's another example where API can be used. Put all your information in there. It goes directly to your airline database and the data line database has the API to give you all the information that you need, right? This is an interactive. All right, so API can go all to the different places depending on the information that you give. So all you have to do is design this and attach the API and the API will look at all the information because you followed the rules and go in and use the information that you were given to access their databases and give you your result. So the, the API is the middleman for the vendor so you just write however you want your application to be connected to the api that you were given and then the api will go and gather all the information that you need so this way you don't need to know how to access all of this and how, you don't need to learn their operating system from scratch you just need to make a nice app that connects to the api typically they are either please write these down these apis are either public or open, all right? For example, Google allows their APIs to be open um, so they can be used for with Android. So you get all these different apps in the App Store. They could be internal or private, and there could be partners, especially for between companies, all right? So um, only between companies. All right, so please write those down. Here are the different types of web services API. You got the SOAP, the REST, the, um, the XML R RPC, and the JavaScript, the JSON RPC. All right, so please take a snapshot of this as well. These for the web services APIs, right? When you're doing it over the web. All right, so let's take a look at the REST and the RESTful API. Um, a REST API, please write this down, is an API that works on top of HTTP protocol. It defines a set of functions developers can use uh, to perform request and receive responses via HTTP, either as GET or POST. RESTful APIs, write this down as well, is use uh, use common HTTPL methods, same thing as uh, including the post, the get, the put, the patch, and the delete, um, as shown in here, right? So please write that down as well. So write down the bottom one for the RESTful and uh, this uh, table. This is what the, the CRUD, so the methods of HTTP, this is what RESTful do. It's pretty much the same thing. All right, and it uses uh, rep resources and web services such as RESTful APIs identify using a URI. A URI is a string of characters that identifies a specific network resource. Okay, so that's that. This is the anatomy of a RESTful request. Um, we need to know that. That's, those are good to know. This is also good to know. Um, what else do you need to know about this? I think this is pretty good. The management configuration tools. Um, you have, this is the good old ways of doing it using CLI. But now you're going to have a network management tool station that's going to configure all of our devices. Right? In the, through the web. And you can use any of these. So that's what network automations comes down to. And these are the four different types of tools. So please write these down. At least you'll know what they are. And this table is what I want you to see. Uh, I want you to have as well. All right. So please write this is to compare the different types of management tools that allow you to configure devices remotely over the Internet. Right. In the cloud, in other words. 
Okay, so that's 